over at Marvel Comics, it's been fascinating to witness some of the fallout in the original Sin storyline as the Watcher sent Nick Fury Sr. over to Earth's moon to operate as the Unseen, a character who is looking out for some of the impending threats over in the Marvel Universe. And, as if that wasn't enough, Marvel is also working with a second-generation Fury character with Nick Fury Jr., a hero who's been operating as an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. in some capacity as well. And if that wasn't interesting enough, Marvel has assembled a creative team featuring author Al Ewing, who's returning from really interesting miniseries establishing fascinating continuity for Ant-Man and the Wasp. My name is Arako Braddock, and today let's go ahead and dive into the pages of Fury number one over from Marvel Comics uh, to see what kind of new conclusions we can draw for Nick Fury and in his fight with Scorpio. But before we dive deeper into the video, I want to go ahead and encourage you to consider subscribing to the channel or hitting that like button if you enjoy our contents. And I want to introduce Fury number one with Marvel Comics solicitation text for the issue. Who is Scorpio? A glamorous rogue agent with a deadly secret lures Nick Fury into the action thriller of a lifetime, his father's. Following the trail open, never before seen Fury files from the Howlin' 40s, the Swingin' 60s, and today. But it takes more than one question to unlock a mystery decades in the making and to answer the question, who is Scorpio? I want to go ahead and introduce our creative team behind Fury number one. This issue is written by Al Ewing, uh, featuring art over from Scott Eaton and inks from Cam Smith. We have additional art over from Tom Riley, Adam Kubert, and Roman Rosanis. The colors in the issue are coming in from Jordi Belair, and the letters are from VC's Joe Caramagna. And I want to go ahead and show off the cover on Fury number one. Uh, this one is illustrated over from Adam Kubert and Dean White. Here's a look over at the cover from Fury number one coming in from Marvel Comics. Love how this issue kind of utilizes so many different generations of Nick Fury characters to introduce the idea that sort of the multiple generations of Fury are really important to the story. And I want to go ahead and extend a quick thank you over to Adventures in Poor Taste as well as we kind of get a really fascinating introduction to this story where Nick Fury Jr. is diving under the sea to uh, discover the mysterious information that he got over from a dead drop in the issue. Love how kind of Scott Eaton and uh, Cam Smith illustrate this sequence as well with so much action and Nick Fury kind of undergoing so much motion over on the page. And I was really taken aback over in this second page as well with all of the kind of individual panels showing you the kind of interesting technology that Nick Fury is working with kind of throughout uh, this series. And was really interested too by how quickly we sort of got the introduction in the tale uh, for kind of the mysterious dead drop as well as the big confrontation over between Nick Fury Jr. and the character of Scorpio, who's kind of followed the Fury franchise for a number of years now. I really love how this issue has such a big focus on the kind of generations of the character. And also, I think it's interesting how this issue utilizes the kind of continuity built around Scorpio in the Zodiac Key kind of throughout the entire narrative here was really struck by how Al, Al Ewing kind of utilizes uh, the kind of narrative in his script from the perspective of structure. In previous Al Ewing sequences, we've seen kind of this text on the page reintroducing the kind of status quo for the story. And I think it's just incredible when Al Ewing kind of shuffles over to the next story. The way that he kind of ties it together and switches protagonists is done in a really kind of artful context here. And due to the fact that the writing kind of steadily changes, it's just wonderful to get this kind of retro looking uh, Nick Fury inspired uh, kind of Tom Riley art in the issue that's really zany and goes really wild too. I think the kind of colorist Jordi Belair does a great job uh, kind of switching up the colors depending on which artist is telling a story in the tale. 
Really like uh, some of Adam Kubert's contributions over to the story as well. He also introduced a kind of different context uh, for uh, this stage in Fury. And also, I like how these kind of individual stories also keep and introduce some of the themes of the greater plot intact. A lot of these stories have to do with kind of elements of uh, Scorpio and the Zodiac Key that's really fascinating to see kind of play out over in some of these issues. And also, I really didn't want to see Marvel kind of leave uh, the Fury status quo without Al Ewing getting a chance to sort of comment over on the Nick Fury Sr. status quo with him being the unseen. I really do think that Al Ewing has some kind of fascinating new uh, status quo ideas and follows up on the sort of original sin status quo with a bit of an interesting sort of turn of phrase that moves the continuity forward a little bit. Really hope that kind of moving forward that Marvel will reference this kind of new uh, continuity change that Al Ewing placed in this issue and really excited to see what kind of the future implications of this story are. I really like where Al Ewing left off uh, with kind of Nick Fury Sr. in particular in this tale and think that that kind of final page over with Ramon Rosanis is captured so beautifully over in the issue. So at the end of the day here, I was really impressed with Fury. Number one, I really think that Marvel did such a wonderful job establishing so many aspects of this series and bringing together so many kind of fascinating parts of Fury's identity kind of throughout the years over at Marvel Comics. Really hoping that the publisher will kind of utilize the new continuity established here and will really kind of move the Fury character forward in future stories. I want to know from you, what are some of your thoughts over on this issue of Fury number one? Did you like this tale as much as I did? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for coming to check out the video, and we'll be back really soon for more excellent comic book content. Thanks so much, and I'll see you soon. Bye.